In this episode, you'll learn all about committing files with Git and IntelliJ. And while committing seems to be such a simple task, there's a couple of nice features that IntelliJ offers when it comes to committing. So let's find out what these are. And to get things started, go to a package of your liking and then simply create a new Java class and I'll simply call it Wolf. And then you'll get a nice little pop-up window and it's basically asking you, should I add the wolf.java file or any new Java file to the Git index? And then do you want me to remember your choice? So click remember the choice and yes, and that will automatically, whenever you create a new file, like wolf2 now, add it to the Git index. Good. Now to make things a bit more exciting, open up the kitten class and add another line. So you change the class and then also delete another class, which is the app one in my example, and you simply delete it. Good, now comes the most important dialog and it's the commit dialog. Open it up and there's quite a few things here on the screen, but we'll go through it step by step. And first of all, you'll see all the changes that happened or that you're about to commit. And the colors tell you green is you added new files, blue is you changed files, grayed out is you deleted files, and you could, in theory, say, I don't want to commit the deletion of the app Java class, so deselect it, and you only want to commit the change kitten file and the wolf2 file. Then, as expected, you can enter your own commit message here. So write something, I am committing something, which is fine. And then down below, which sometimes is a bit cramped, you'll have a diff window and you'll immediately see the changes that happen to the file you'll select up here. So in this case, in the kitten class, we added a new line, the app file you deleted, and you can see that by the diff being grayed out completely. And also the wolf and wolf2.java files you added, and you can see that by them being greened out, so to speak. So it's quite nice seeing the changes down here in the commit dialog, but I oftentimes find that a bit too cramped and they can simply select the files up here and open up the diff view up there. And then you have the full side-by-side -side viewer, which you can also resize and whatnot and step through the changes. And also quite nice to, to know here is that you have these arrows and the arrows would normally move you through all the changes inside one file and if you have no more changes left, you can hit the arrow twice and then it will move you to the next file, the wolf class in my example, or the wolf2 class in my example, or you could also move up and then you'll end up with the app class. So you can basically move through all files that you're about to commit. Good. Now, these things are the basics, but what about the column to the right? And you'll see a git section, a before commit section, and an after commit section. And let's have a closer look at the before commit section. It's basically anything that IntelliJ should do before it runs the actual commit. And you have a couple of checkboxes. And I think by default, only perform code analysis and check to do are ticked. And check to do basically checks all the files you're about to commit for any to do messages. And if there are any messages, it will pop up a warning window and, and prompt you to fix these warnings. Otherwise, it won't let you commit. The same for code analysis. It will run static code analysis through your Java files and will print out warnings if, for example, you've got unchecked casts or whatever. And I find code analysis, especially in bigger legacy projects, to be a bit of a pain, so I most often uncheck it. But more importantly, you've got reformat code, rearrange code, and optimize imports. And instead of telling you exactly what these do, I will show you in code. So close the dialog, go to the wolf class, then just quickly give it some new fields. So private string name, private int h, for example, generate some getters and setters. Then put in a private static final int id field. Doesn't make too much sense now, but I just want to put it in. And then also rearrange the file and put the getters and setters anywhere you'd like so that it doesn't make much sense and also finally move the a couple of methods to the left so the formatting is off and then also import 
a Java class that you're not using and you could simply import the exception class. So now you've got a Java class, which looks quite ugly. Open up the commit dialog again. Make sure you've got reformat code, rearrange code, optimize imports checked. Then if you want, put in a commit message of your liking, but then simply choose commit, not commit and push, because that will push it to the remote repository, to origin. You just commit it to your local repository. And then when you go back to your file, you suddenly see that it looks clean and nice. And that's because IntelliJ did a couple of things. First, it optimized the import, so the exception import is gone here. Then it reformatted the code, so the layout is nice again, it's not tapped to the left. And then also it rearranged the code. And rearranging the code means it makes sure that the getters and setters are not scattered through the class, but they're basically next to each other that the private static field or any static fields are on top of the class. And then you've got your normal fields, private or public, they're also sorted. And then at the very bottom, you've got the getters and setters. So that is what rearranging the code means. And that is quite nice and can help you with conformity across a project a lot before anyone commits. Good. And now when you open up the version control window and go to the log section, you'll also see your commit here. Again, in that window, you'll see exactly what happened. You deleted the app file, you changed the kitten file, you added the wolf and wolf2 files. You'll see that the commit is only on your local master branch. The origin master branch, so the remote repository, is still one commit behind. It's at the edit idea files commit. And the only le thing left for you to do now is to push your commit to the remote repository. But before we go to pushing things, first of all, quickly, let's add something here to being able to open up the commit dialog again. And as an exercise, I want you to have a look at what the author amend commit sign off commit and also the after commit section does here in the commit dialog. And I also want you to play with change lists and find out what change lists are. We are going to talk more about change lists in future episodes, but now in the next episode, We'll talk about pushing things to remote repositories. What happens if other people push to the remote repository before you? And then we'll have a close look at merging and rebasing, which are the most interesting topics when it comes to the Git integration. So let's get right after that.